Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalin. Today I want to talk about AVL search trees. So our binary search trees are great, but they do have one problem. The height of a tree varies between big O of log n and big O of n. And the performance of things like find and insert and delete all depend on that height. So if our tree is short and bushy, our operations only take log in time. That's great. But if our tree is tall and skinny, then our operations take linear time, which is no better than using a list. We want short, bushy trees. So how are we going to get them? Well, with AVL trees, the idea is that we're going to keep our trees in balance. The left and right subtree height are going to differ by no more than one. Plus, we're going to guarantee that the left and right subtrees are AVL trees. If that's true, then our height for the tree can never be more than log n. We're always in the big O of log n space, never into that ugly linear space. So, what changes? with an AVL tree. Our search is going to be the same. We're searching the binary search tree. Our search process does not care whether it's a regular old binary search tree or an AVL search tree. With insertion, we are going to have changes. We have to check the balance factor, which is what we call the difference between the two subtree heights. And if that is too far out of balance, we're going to have to rotate. We also have changes with deletion. So with deletion, we also have to check our balance factors, and we may have to rotate up to log in times. Now, in many cases, we actually don't implement deletion. We'll use what we call logical deletion, where we just mark the node deleted and ignore it. Note that with all of these things, our operation links are going to be, note that with all of these things, our operation running times are going to be log n. So search is the same and the height is guaranteed to be no more than log n. Insertion initially works the same. That's going to be based on the height, which is log n. And then we're going to rotate maybe once. So log in overall. Even deletion, although it is more complex and we're not going to get into it here, we're going to only have to rotate up to log in times. So the overall operation is still big O of log in. So let's look at how this actually works and what I mean by this rotation thing. Here's an example AVL tree. It's not a perfectly balanced tree by any means but it does meet the AVL rules. The height of the left and right subtrees differ by only one. And if we look at each node in the tree, it's left and right subtrees differ by no more than one. So we have an AVL tree. So this balance factor thing I mentioned, we're gonna take the height of the left tree minus the height of the right subtree. As long as that difference is minus one, zero, or one, then all is well. We're in balance, we meet the AVL rules. When the difference is minus two or two, then we're going to have to do this rotation thing. Note that we're always going to do the rotation as low in the tree as possible. So after we do our insertion, we're gonna climb back up the tree, typically with recursion, and the first time we reach a point where the tree is out of balance, we're going to rotate. So let's see how it actually works. I'm going to insert 62 into the AVL tree I showed you. Once we've done that insertion, which worked exactly the same way as insertion does in regular binary search trees to that point, then we have to check the balance factors. So we're going to look where we insert it is always a leap, so it's always in balance. The 58 is in balance, but the 50, its left is zero, its right is two, 
we have a problem. We have to rotate. The idea here then is that we're going to take the parent node from the original, the node right below the one that was out of balance, and the node that's out of balance, and we're simply going to rotate them. So 58 is going to become the parent with 50 as its child, like so. And now you see the tree is back to being an ABL tree. Let's look at a different example and insert 23. So after we insert the 23, we need to check those balance factors. The leaf is fine, of course. Its parent is fine. But at the 21, we have a problem. Now, one thing to notice here is that trying to rotate at the 21 and 28 isn't going to help because if we want this to stay a search tree, we're still going to be out of balance. We just switch whether it's 21, 28, 23 or 28, 21, 23. So for these circumstances, instead of using this single rotation that we used uh, with the 50 and the 58, we're going to use what we call a double rotation. So in this case, we pull the grandchild up and make the parent and grandparent the left and right children, like so. So the way we know whether we're doing a single rotation or a double rotation is where the balance problem is coming from. If we have two items to the same direction, left, left, or right, right, then we're going to do a single rotation. If, however, our imbalance comes from two different directions, so the child is a left child and then the grandchild is a right child of that left child, then we need the double rotation. Now, one of the issues that we run into is that we may have children to deal with. So the two examples we've done so far, we didn't have any children that were going to interfere with the rotation process. But in many cases, as we build a larger tree, we may need to rotate higher up in the tree and have extra children that ha get replaced by the rotated nodes. The key thing here to remember is that we have to keep these in search tree order. So let's look at a couple of examples. First, we'll look at a single rotation with children. So we're going to add something so that we're going to have to rotate right up at the very top of the tree. So in this case, we'll insert the 12. After inserting, we need to check our balance factors. So the leaf, of course, is fine. Its parent is fine. The 10 is also fine. The 18 is fine, but the 30 is not fine. Now to figure out which kind of rotation we need, we're going to look at the, that child and grandchild. 18 is the left child of 30 and 10 is the left child of 18. So we're doing a single rotation. So that means we're going to make the 18 the parent and the 30 its child. Now the issue here is going to be with the 23 because the 30 is now going to be the right child of 18. So the 23 has to go somewhere. And what's going to happen here is that the 23 is going to replace the 18 as the left child of the 30. So we see that we rotated the 18 to the top. Its left child stayed the same. 30's right child stayed the same. But we moved the 23 from the right child of 18 to the left child of 30. So now let's look at the same scenario, but set it up so that we're doing a double rotation with children. So once again, we're going to add something. So we're going to need to rotate with the 30, but this time we're going to make that happen so that we need a double rotation. So to make that happen, we're going to insert the 25. And then we're going to check our balance factors. So once again, the leaf is fine. Its parent is fine. 23 is fine, the 18 is fine, but the 30, once again, is not fine. Now this time we see the 18 is the left child of 30, 
but the 23 is the right child of 18. Since those are coming from two different directions, we need a double rotation to fix the tree. So this means we have multiple children to deal with because 23 is now going to become the root. 18 and 30 are going to become its left and right children, which means the 21 and the 28 need somewhere to go. And what will happen is the 21 will become the right child of the 18 and the 28 will become the left child of the 30, like so. So if this gives you some idea of how AVL trees work and how we actually do this insertion and rotation process. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time when I'll talk about splay trees.